How do we change irrational thinking? As you may realize as you read the articles on this site, the underlying core issue for many problems resides with irrational thinking styles. That, of course, is the basic premise of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT. We develop styles of thinking based upon our learning experiences, our parents' thinking, and societal community beliefs and expectations. Learning Experiences When we are growing up, we have many experiences, and the outcome of these experiences contribute to beliefs or ways of thinking that we develop. For instance, as a child, I was very shy and fearful of speaking in public due to fear of making a mistake and being ridiculed. In the seventh grade, I had a teacher who encouraged me to attend speech competitions. I was so excited that she thought I could be good at this that I was willing to face my fear and engage in speech competitions, which I continued even throughout high school. As a result, I developed the belief, even though talking in front of people causes anxiety, I am capable of doing it. Now, if I had not had that experience and my main experience was being embarrassed in front of my class because I couldn't say the word peculiar when I was reading out loud, I may have developed the belief, talking in front of people leads to embarrassment, which I must avoid. The problem that causes this belief to be irrational is that it is black and white. It leaves no room for alternatives. I would be assuming that talking in front of people always leads to embarrassment. Instead, by doing speech competitions, I learned that talking in front of people could be enjoyable and could lead to awards. Trauma is an important subset of learning experiences that severely affects an individual's belief system. For example, an individual who survived a fire has a fear of low-probability catastrophes. Due to the fact that a low-probability catastrophe occurred to him or her, it is more difficult to challenge the thinking with a statement such as, it is unlikely to occur. Or a person who was raped and then told it was her fault because she left her door unlocked may tend to unreasonably blame herself for things that happen. Parents' Thinking Sometimes parents teach irrational thinking directly, such as, What would the neighbors think? Implying that if the neighbors saw a dirty house, they would be critical because the dishes aren't done and the beds aren't made. Parents may catastrophize about situations and pass their worries on to their children, such as, I don't want to fly because the airplane might crash. Often they don't recognize that their thinking is irrational, and so they don't tell their children there might be alternative ways to think. For instance, they don't typically say, I have an irrational fear of crashing, but airplane travel is actually the safest form of travel. Even if parents don't directly tell children how to think, they impart certain ways of thinking based on their behavior and how they handle situations. For instance, I remember my father speeding past a bunch of cars and then coming to a stoplight, which caused all the cars he had passed to catch up with him. He slammed his hand on the steering wheel and said, They're all laughing at me. At first, I was confused. But then I came to understand what he meant and that others laughing at him was a catastrophe. From this and other similar incidents, I came to learn that I had to be careful in how I behaved so that people wouldn't have the opportunity to laugh at me. Societal Community Beliefs and Expectations We learn a great deal of thinking based on the culture we grow up in. For instance, a professor of mine once described his experience as a teacher in the Virgin Islands. He said they did not have the same concept of time that we do in the United States. College students in the U.S. typically arrive to class on time, but as soon as the class is over, they are out the door, even if the instructor is in mid-sentence. However, in the Virgin Islands, college students might arrive 20 to 30 minutes late, but they also tended to stay longer and be involved in discussions after class. Neither of these scenarios are right or wrong. They are just different behaviors based upon cultural influences. However, sometimes those societal beliefs and expectations can lead to problematic behaviors. Here in the U.S., the perfectionistic tendencies that are imparted to us as we grow up can lead to being overwhelmed and not trying. For instance, I believe much of our problem as a society with obesity 
can be related to these attitudes. I can't make myself stay on a diet and exercise daily, so why should I bother trying? Changing thinking with cognitive restructuring. Therefore, due to these various influences, you have developed your thinking style, both rational and irrational. You may already recognize some of your irrational thinking styles and how they developed. But you want to know now, how do I change this thinking? In fact, many times you've probably had people tell you, think this way, but no one tells you how to think this way. So you still have the question, how do I think that way? The answer is that you are already halfway there. Half of the battle is recognizing the thinking that is problematic for you. You can do this by reading other articles on this site as well as the recommended books. The next step, however, is the part that requires more active work and that is challenging the thinking, repeatedly and often. This part of therapy is known as cognitive restructuring. To learn any new skill, you first have to identify how to complete the skill correctly, and then you have to practice the skill repeatedly. So, for instance, if you want to learn how to hit a ball with a bat, you need to learn how to hold the bat and how to stand and when to swing. But just because you know intellectually how to hit a ball doesn't mean that you will be able to. The next step is to practice swinging the bat at the ball and adjusting your stance until you can hit the ball. However, even then, it doesn't mean that you can automatically hit the ball whenever it is thrown to you. At this point, you need to practice swinging the bat at the ball again and again until you develop the muscle memory to do it automatically. That way, when you are under the stress of two outs in the ninth inning, you will be able to automatically engage in the behavior you need to hit the ball. Well, learning a new way of thinking is learning a new thinking skill, and the process is the same as learning to hit a ball with a bat. You need to identify the thinking you want to learn, and then you need to engage in it repeatedly until it becomes automatic. Just as your body doesn't feel comfortable at first when you are learning to hit a ball, your brain doesn't feel comfortable at first with a new way of thinking. However, the more you engage in the new thinking, the more comfortable you will become with it and the more you will believe it and be able to rely on it. The most difficult part of creating the new way of rational thinking for most people is the repetitive practice. Some people, however, may have difficulty with recognizing how their thinking is irrational, in which case they may need further assistance from a therapist. However, for everyone else, the process at this point is to develop methods of practice. The two main methods I recommend for my clients is listening to the rational thinking improvement and or self-esteem audio exercises and completing a daily cognitive diary. Rational thinking improvement audio. This exercise is listening to an audio that focuses on challenging a number of the common errors in people's thinking, including perfectionistic demand, fear of anxiety, catastrophic thinking, and social anxiety. The more you listen to this audio exercise, the more you will be able to think of it during the situations that typically cause irrational thinking for you. I've recorded this audio as a way to make it easier for my clients to get the repetition they need to develop a new way of thinking. Self-esteem audios. The purpose of these audios, as the name suggests, is to improve self-esteem. However, these exercises require a little more than just listening to the audio. It requires you to know how to challenge your thinking because it provides opportunities to challenge the thinking but doesn't tell you how to think like the above audio. For example, it has you imagine writing your negative self-talk on a blackboard, erasing it, and replacing it with positive self-talk. But it doesn't tell you exactly what to say. You need to create the self-talk yourself. You can do this by using the cognitive diary method. Again, the more you use this audio, the more it helps you change your thinking. Cognitive diary. The second primary method is to write down situations that disturb or distress you in the form of a cognitive diary. In a cognitive diary, not only do you describe the situation, but you write down in detail your self-talk. 
Then you review the self-talk and identify what is irrational about the self-talk. Finally, you rewrite your self-talk in a more rational way and then remind yourself of the new way of thinking as frequently as you can. You may do this by rereading the cognitive challenges daily and or even creating your own personalized audio reminders that you can listen to. Commitment to Change Irrational Thinking Thinking is very changeable. However, you need to make the commitment to do the work. If you worked on changing your thinking every day by reading, listening to the audio exercises, and completing a cognitive diary, you will find your thinking changing even within a few weeks. This doesn't mean that your thinking will be completely changed in that time, but you can find yourself well on the way to improving your life.